What's up, the squad? Back with another video. I'm Rex, man. Make sure y'all hit the like button, subscribe button. Other videos you're gonna be check out. Make sure y'all DM on Instagram, Life Reckless, or um, email Life Reckless at y'all .com. Definitely have to check this video out. Definitely have to check this video out. Um, definitely look very interesting. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right to it. All right, here we go. Let's talk about Black Lives Matter. So this guy started it, and here's what he said. Read that. The press is black people. It's bigger than football. Oppresses black people. And we're talking about violence. This initially emerged as a result of violence against black people, killing black people. Okay? Go to the next slide. What's it take? This, hap this is from just last week in St. Louis. Protests that arose as a result of the, 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 the plea of police killing a young black man who was running from them and they were driving away from them and where all sorts of things happened, but the police was, the police officer got off. And so people went out into the street. And so the question is, what's it take to get people out into the street? Um, I think it takes like, I don't know, just killing like when they realize like their own people or their own kind is getting shot or getting killed or being oppressed by the cops, that's when it just takes them like, this is just it, like I have to protest. I have to protest, it's, yes. it's done. Yeah. Something happens, something I see, it's just, it's done, I'm, I'm out, I'm mm -hmm. in the streets. So let's look at the data because I see signs like this. I believe, Police must stop shooting us. It's a genocide. I was going to put a sign up and I didn't take it down. Someone had a sign that said, it's a genocide of black people. Genocide of black people. Okay? So we're going to look at the data here. Go to the next one. People, how, people were killed by the police in 2016. How many people were killed by the police in 2016? What do you think? No, that's okay. No, guess, guess, guess. That's what this is about. I'm going to say a thousand. This is all people. I want to say, like, he said, out of, hold on, let me hear that question again. By the police in 2016. 2016. I want to say, like, 23. What do you think? Am I wrong? Guess, because I got it so wrong last time. No, that's okay. No, <laughs> guess, guess, guess. That's what this is about. I'm going to say a thousand. Hold on, how many black people? Why is 23? Hold on, let me hear it again. I'm sorry, y'all. What do you think? Because I want to make sure I'm, I'm hearing it right. Yes, I got it so wrong last time. No, that's okay. No, <laughs> guess, guess, guess. That's what this is about. I'm going to say a thousand. A thousand seemed a little it's hot, though. All people. All people. Wow. I think a thousand, too. What do you all think? What do you think? Come up with a number. Say it to the person next to you. What do you think? Dude, what do you think? 500? I don't, I don't know. I'm just like, I just don't what do you like, think, bro? Like, like, What's that? Two, three hundred? What do you think? How much? All right, here we go. Bro, I'm probably way off, bro. 963. <laughs> okay? You both nailed it. Yeah. You're good. Okay. And who are these people? What's their background? And that's why I said I have to re rehear the question. Um, it's a little low in my earphones for me. Um, I thought he meant like how many black people were killed by the police. Um, but my answer was still, it was low. I said 23, 960. Who are the people that got killed? Up. Of 963, how many do you think were black? Um, I would say about 600 will be black. 600. And then like the rest will be like maybe Hispanic. 600 like, black, what would you say? Probably like 500. How many were black? Turn to the person next to you, come up with a number. Bro, looking it up. What do you say, bro? Like, I know. I 300? Said. Dude, how many? 
Uh, I'm gonna do better on my answer. Y'all gonna, y'all gonna, y'all, y'all gonna, y'all ain't, I ain't gonna. That one up. I said 23. Uh, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say about 368. Dude, how many? All right, you ready? Next one. Okay, so here we go. 233 233 Hmm Okay So we're off, right? If you, you know, if you're if you're what do you think about that number? Um this is actually kind of surprising. I honestly thought it would be more black people. But, but I feel like and that's the thing. I feel like if more people paid attention, um and that's why I want to react to this video too. Um but I feel like if more people pay attention, watch videos, do research and stuff like that, then we obviously know, you know, um, I feel like that's that's the most important thing. Um, just not about black crime, just about crime in general, about what's going on in general, just knowing instead of sitting there and going out and doing this. So I can because they show makes sense. More black people getting like, uh -huh. kind of, they like make it seem like black people are always getting like killed by the cops more than Hold on, y'all. That's all I see. Video skipping a little bit. Not on my end. What would you oh, yeah. say? I find that kind of surprising too, but like I agree. Like I see more media like showing black people getting killed by police than white people, so it's probably just like in my mind since I see it more that it happens more. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, so go to the next one. So here's U.S. population by ancestry. Okay. So here we are, 63 right now, in mid-2016, 63% white, 17% Hispanic Latin. You see the numbers, right? So let's break this down and what we're talking about. Next slide. So here's the likelihood of being killed by the police. This is not, you know, if you're doing illegal activity, this is just breaking it down. So you have one in 250,000. For black people, white people, clearly you're less likely to be killed if you're white. And is, are those numbers large? Are those numbers large to you? Yeah. They are? Well, like, is one in 250,000, is that high? No. <laughs> go ahead, no, go ahead. I don't, I don't really know. Like, it, it's a lot, like that ratio is a lot different than the rest. Like you can answer. Okay, hang on. Okay. Well, you, why don't you answer in the same way that you answered the other question? It depends. Yeah. I asked you the same question. Is I know, that high? I know, I know. Yeah, no. It, it's not high, but it still does depend on the situation. I don't know. I'm to no, no, no. Hang on. I'll help you, though. <laughs> no, I'm not trying to trap you, by no, the no, way. No. The same answer flies yeah. here. Because it, cause it just depends. It's high. It's still one out of 250,000. It's still high. One out of 250 million is high. If you're that one person, and if that's your family, like if that's someone in your family, it doesn't matter if it's one out of 250 million, it matters. If, you were, if, it's your, if your father's the only police officer that's hurt in the line of duty in all of the next 10 years, that's still too high. It's still unacceptable to you. Right? Yeah. What do you think about <coughs> the number, one in 250,000? Um, I actually think that's, I don't know. I think that's pretty high, just because it's like a person, no matter like every life matters. So like, I think one out of 250,000 is like. Okay, but listen, can you, can I throw something at you now? Yeah. Okay. We haven't talked about what these people were doing, what people were doing who were killed by the police, right? So if I'm a criminal and I'm trying to shoot her father, and then her father's partner, somebody shoots me, then that's not a high number. That one in 250,000, I was trying to kill somebody and I got shot in the process. So that's not inherently a problem. It's either I kill this innocent person, like if I'm gonna try to kill you, let's say, right? Yeah. And the, somebody shoots me, yeah. you're like, thank God you shoot that, shot that knucklehead, right? Yeah. So right now, these numbers don't really mean a lot. Are we cool? They don't really mean a lot because we don't know what they are. 
So we can say, well, yeah, look, it's one in 250. Well, clearly, black people are more likely to get killed. Well, maybe black people are doing more things to provoke the police. So like, we don't know that. We really don't know yet. So we got to go further. You see, like, you got to keep going further. Are, yeah. you, are you there? Are you following me? Yeah. Okay. All right, man. Are we cool? Got it? This is a thinking class right now. I'm walking you through. I like this uh, professor. Um, same pool. Through some thinking. Okay, go to the next one. So 233 black people were killed by the police in 2016 out of a population of 39 million. Okay? How would you answer that young man's question? Am I next? How would you answer his question? Uh, me personally, I would answer it by if he's holding up a sign saying, am I next? My first thought is I understand like a lot of people go to these protests and stuff like that. But at the same time, um, I don't I don't I don't I don't go to protest um, just for the simple fact of what can happen. Um, the the risk that you take in when you when you going out to these protests because it can get bad. Um, that's just like if the next person over here. Say, say a next person make a make a stupid mistake. I've seen uh, plenty of things of this happening, um, of somebody making a stupid mistake of throwing some of the police officer or doing something, and a riot starts. Say that riot starts and you there, you there. Something happens. There you have it. I mean, that's just that's a risk that you took with going to a protest. And I'm not saying that all protests are bad, but you are taking a risk going to a protest just based off of somebody's actions. Just like when you get on the road, you get on the road. Yes, you can. You you might be the best driver in the world, but hey, it might be that one person that's driving reckless. It might be that one person that. So, you are taking a risk. You take a risk. Now, you putting yourself in that position of going to something like that. You feel me? It's 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 a risk. There's it, it, something can happen. Um, and then on top of that, uh, answering this question, hey, he's holding. Am I next? It just depends on how you take your life. Um, Anything, by all means, anything can happen. But at the same time, if you carry your life with, and I'm pretty sure him saying, am I next? That means something to do with the police. Um, my dad's a police officer. Been a police officer for 24 years. Um, 25. And my sister, yeah, my sister is 24. So, yeah, 24 years. And he's always taught us, uh, basically, you getting pulled over. I already have your stuff out if you can if you can't it's fine you feel me it's fine you that's what questions are asked for you keep your hands on the dashboard or on the steering wheel don't move you speak to the officer you can do that don't move around don't be doing too much don't argue with the police officer it don't matter if the police officer is talking crazy talking you 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 be respectful you give out respect that's one thing that i'll always talk you you give out respect you're gonna get it and if you don't get it, still give out respect. And I feel like that's most important. So to answer this question is, am I next? It just depends on how you carry yourself with the police officers. That's just me being me being honest. Um, because a lot of people, and I mean a lot of people, not just saying black people, they think they can act recklessly and talk crazy to police officers. And they they always say one thing. They, they always say this. I always hear police officers for my safety and yours. They say that for a reason. So all you gotta do is comply. You keep. Um, I would honestly say yes because I just feel like I don't know. Like I feel like it's harder being a black male. No, but what do you mean? That like, you, he, he's saying, "Am I? Am I next?" Yeah. Am I next? You're saying yes. You are next. I mean, like not like. I'm and I, I'm tired of hearing that too. It's harder to be a black male. First of all, you're a woman. You can't speak for another black male. If that was a black male, that's one thing. That's just like me. I can't speak for a woman. I can't say, oh, yeah, it's hard being a, it's hard being a, belle, a woman. I'm not a woman, so I don't know. But I know me being a black male, it's harder as in what? I'm trying, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to follow her answer that she's giving. But it's harder being a black male as in what? Because for me, I look at the next person. Don't, don't matter who you are. If I know that I, that I can, first of all, I'm not... I, I, I'm a person that don't look at the next person. I'm going to focus on what I got going on and what I can do to provide for my family, protect my family, and, you know, be, be the best father, the best, you know, uh, boyfriend, um, husband, uh, son, you know, grandson, cousin that, that I can be. 
rather than worrying about the next person. So her saying that, I don't agree. Like he better watch out the things he does. Okay, because, got it. Yeah. Yeah. Watch out. Yeah, just You're, watch out because like he's kind of like a target, you know, his appearance. You know, he looks like a typical black male, so. Okay, so yeah. if he's holding a sign and then I'm holding the sign, or like, I don't know, somebody else who looks more like him, <laughs> a white guy and a dude, that dude over there who looks like a hippie, right, in the front row. <laughs> If that dude's holding a sign, you're going to say, yeah, this guy, you should watch your back more than that guy. Yeah, that's my opinion. Okay, no, that's cool. Yeah. What would you say? I, I think that opinion does make sense. Like, I agree with the, like, watch your back thing, but also, like, watch I feel like back. she's lost, and I feel like she, I feel like it's, it's that effect. She's agreeing with her, and she was agreeing with him. When he makes point, and I feel like both of these young ladies, they they really have potential. They're smart because they're sitting there listening rather than arguing. Um, but I also I, I I it's one thing of, of getting out information. I feel like that's more important than anything. Is they probably left here actually thinking about the stuff that they said and what he Watch said the as well. Situations you get yourself into as well. You know, what I, like mm -hmm. if you're in a more dangerous situation, then more can go wrong. Then if you're not but i do agree that like if a white guy was holding that sign it would be more likely for the black guy to Got have you. to be more in danger of getting hurt than the white guy okay all right let's go one more are we cool are, is everyone following here are we good okay we're gonna go one more ready so how many of the 963 people were unarmed this is what we're talking about here right remember the story it's like if i'm if i got a gun to the, to, to the two of you Right, like I have a gun to your heads. That's very different than if I'm just like walking up n next to you or behind you, and somebody sees me and shoots me because they think I'm going to do harm to you. Right? It's like very different. If I have a weapon, if I don't have, if I say, "Hey, I'm going to kill these two people," and I'm standing here and I have no weapon on me, I have nothing, and the police shoot me anyway, it's very different than if I'm standing here with a knife saying, "I'm going to kill these two people." Okay, are we good with that? So how many of the 963 people were unarmed? How many do you think they, how many do you think were unarmed? Of the 963? What do you think? Four. Unarmed. 963, we're talking white people. That spent, how many do you all think? To point, turn to the person next to you, what do you think? How many of the 963 were unarmed? Okay, here we go. Go to the next slide. 517 had a gun. 150 had a knife. 65 were in a vehicle. 44 had a toy weapon. 70 had an instrument. 48 were unarmed. Oh, wow. So here are the numbers. This was the most comprehensive analysis of the data done by a research team at the Washington Post. It's not 100% accurate, but it's pretty accurate. So 69 unknown, but unknown enough that they didn't throw them in the unarmed category. So they were, you assume that their, the likelihood of being unarmed is, is equal percentage-wise, ratio-wise to the other. In, you know, and in a vehicle, can we be clear about a vehicle? That's a vehicle trying to run over, please. Mm. Toy guns. Okay. I was wondering about that. A lot of those people, of course, were committing suicide in all likelihood because that seems to be a form. What do you think about that number? Hang on. Can I ask you first? What do you think about that number? You said 600. I said 550. 500. And you said 400. We're unarmed. You said 500. We're unarmed. What do you think about that number? Um, I'm actually, I'm actually kind of like shocked. I honestly thought like, I'm not saying like the media, like, I don't know, they just made it seem like, you know, the guy was innocent, you know, he was just trying to go about his way. But I don't know, like, this is, I don't know the numbers they took or the guys they took it from or whatever. But I just think it's just crazy how five, 517 had a gun. I would think it would be less than that. Yeah. Okay. Honest, yeah. yeah. So you certainly think it would be more, Way especially given that. what you just said about looking at your Twitter feed and yeah. Facebook and social media and, and so on, I right? Mean, 
well, like we know, like the media just ex- exaggerates everything. So I that's guess all that's you do your own research. What do you think about the number? I'm actually pretty surprised by it too. But when I think about it more, I guess like since the media does portray more of those stories where the person is unarmed. So again, like it makes me think that there are more cases of unarmed things, but clearly there's not. So 22 out of 233 black people who police killed in 2016 were unarmed. 22 out of 233. Okay, so now the question is, so that means you have a 0.6 chance in a million. 0.6 chance, about half of 1% in a million of being unarmed, black skin, and killed by the police. And that right there just shows you that's how you carry yourself. Like, people don't understand, like, carrying yourself is a big thing. Like, the way that you do, like, you don't have to, you don't have to be the bigger person. Like, you don't, you don't have to be the bully all the time. You don't have to sit there and talk crazy all the time to no police officer. That's one thing that you don't do, um, especially if you want things. Like, just get your ticket. If you're getting a ticket or get your warning, you're getting a warning to go about your day. I feel like a lot of people don't think about their families. They don't think about nothing. Like, think about all of it. You get pulled over. Think about all of it. I feel like that's most important. So now, when you answer that guy's question, am I next? What's your, what would be your answer to that question? Um, 22 out of 233 black people. I think that's a lot. Go with the so, bottom one. At the bottom? 0.6 out of a million. If he stays on our arm, you say, bro, listen. In spite of the, how you're dressed, despite of who you are, if you, or if you remain unarmed, Right. That's the likelihood of you being killed by the police. I think it's a lot because even point one would be a lot to me. So it goes back to what yeah. to what Brianna said. Mm-hmm. Brianna, right? Brenna. Brenna? Yeah. What Brenna said. It's like it's still to that one family. It matters. Okay. And so what I'm going to say to to the two of you is, look, is the glass half full or is the glass half empty? It's like it just depends. We can argue that that's a high number, we can argue that's a low number. We can argue it's exaggerated, we can argue like, no man, it's not exaggerated, it's still really high. Yeah. Like, what is it? You can make the argument in lots of different directions. But what I wanna say is, look, if we're gonna make the arguments and if we're gonna get involved in protests, like, can you go to the next slide, bro? No, hang on, go to one more. That, if you're gonna protest like that, but this whole thing is based on police violence against black and brown people. So if you're going to protest, really step out in this way, you got to know what you're protesting. It's really important to understand what you it do. is. You do, instead of just following the next person. You know what I mean? Correct. Is it like 600 unarmed people or is it, hang on, 42 or 48 or like, what, what, what are we looking at here? Like, Is it a genocide? So when I see someone holding a sign up that says, stop the genocide of black people at a protest. I feel like people don't understand. Like one of the things that that is hard. um, I was in the police academy for for four months. I was in the police academy for four months. And it is something that is is definitely you you see things you you uh, you even growing up, you know, with my father being a cop. And I'll get into story time about why I dropped out of the academy or whatever. Um, it, it wasn't due to anything physical or mental or anything like that. It was just due to, you know, things that were done and said. Um, but uh, one thing about it is you have to put yourself in two of those people's shoes. Okay, so if you have somebody that has a gun that's that's pointed to directly, you, you, you're in their shoes. You're pointing, you know, at a police officer. What... what I want to know the answer a lot of people of what they'll do um, or not pointing, lifting it up, because by the time you even point, you know, it is it, either one or the other. And a lot of times, you know, uh, with the training, you know, it's the person that's committed a crime. But at the same time, you have to put yourself in those shoes. Um, being a police officer is definitely one thing that's hard to do. That's why I said, and that brings me back to what I said, for my safety and yours. 
keep your hands where I can see them. I need to see everybody. Let me see everybody's hands because that's your safety. If you have a toy gun, any type of anything, you lift it up like you're shooting. What would you do if you was that police officer? You have to put yourself in other people's shoes sometimes and just wonder what it is. You shouldn't have to put yourself in that position. You shouldn't have to. And I feel like a lot of people don't understand that. And I'm saying, go back. Can you go back two slides? I wouldn't call that a genocide. There's a lot happening here, but that's not what I would call it. And so for me, as someone who's talking about race relations, who sees these things from lots of perspective, it's really important that we know what we're talking about so that we can be confident and have realistic and good conversations. Because I agree with you. I mean, yeah, it's still high. And yet, it's not what most people think. If I, if I took a microphone, if I went to that protest in St. Louis last week and I walked around with the microphone and I started asking people, hey man, how many people was it last year? How many people? And each one of those, and even the people who are armed, it doesn't matter, it's a life, right? But if I start asking that question, people are gonna give me these really, really high answers. I'm sure 5,000, 8,000, I have no idea. It's like, no, oh, man, that's not bringing us where we need to go. Okay. All right. Definitely uh, enjoy, uh, you know, listening to him. Um, it definitely put a lot of insight on what's going on. Um, and I feel like a lot of people need to pay attention to what's going on around instead of just following the next person. All my friend is going here. All my friend believes. No, you do your own research. You find out what's going on because seeing those statistics and seeing what's actually going on, um, every life matters to me, um, regardless of who you are. Um, and you know that's just one of those things is how you carry yourself and if you have any type of you know uh your mental messed up or any go talk to somebody i feel like that's one thing that's also very important i went through a time like that and i feel like that's important um and i'm not saying that's any excuse by all means of how people are acting but you know some things could you know take you there bad thoughts and stuff like that and that's why it's important to get help um if you can my dms always up my emails already uh, always open um you know if people need to talk i have had plenty of people talk to me um before um about some deep things you know about some real deep things um and i try my best to help them and you know based off of the conversations that i had with those people um uh it, it went very well um and i'm definitely proud to to say that um but prayers goes out uh, to those, you know, families, um, cops as well. Um, I, I actually, uh, my my friend I went to high school with, um, shout out to Broadways. Uh, his father passed away in the line of duty. Um, <clears throat> big big shout outs to my dad's buddy. Um, it, it, it's just you know it, it's sad. You know it's definitely sad. Uh, Officer uh, Allen. Um, it, it's. It's a lot, you know, it's, it's definitely a lot. Um, and to all the individuals, um, regardless, it's a life. That's how I look at it. Um, but then again, it's how you carry yourself. And I feel like that's most important. Carry yourself the right way, you know. Um, you, 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 you are your own person and you have a family. Um, even if you don't, you got God, you know. And I feel like that's the most important thing. Make sure you hit that like button, that subscribe button. Let me know y'all thoughts on this video. Catch y'all next time.